Hello, everyone. So today I wanted to uh, chat a little bit. Excuse the cigarette. It's been a bit, a bit of a long day. So, you know, if you got asthma or something and this is coming through, um, sorry. Uh, but today I kind of wanted to chat about something that was on my mind. I was looking at a couple other um, YouTube videos from other men who are, who also identify as gay. Um, in case you haven't been paying attention, uh, uh, I'm gay. And who have also dealt with weight issues, eating disorders, and other things like that. And I've run the spectrum on, on eating disorders from uh, being anorexic. Um, I think I'd said in a previous video that I met all the criteria. The criteria at the time included losing your period. That didn't happen to me. Not that I kept it, I never had one to begin with. So, um, and then bulimia, I met the criteria for that as well at different periods. Um, not otherwise specified, I met binge eating, um, I had. And then as a consequence of the binge eating, I developed um, obesity after that. So when food is your fix, um, it's hard to hide. You can sometimes hide a drinking problem for a while or a pill addiction um, and some other things. They can go under the radar for a bit. But when you use food either in excess or in absence, it shows up. You wear it. People can see what your problem is. You can maybe bury bulimia for a while because that doesn't necessarily change the shape of your body. Um, and if you have exercise bulimia, you might be able to work off a binge. But by and large, you can see a lot of what's happening with a person if they're using food to cope or to bury their head in the sand with what's going on in their life. So taking all that into consideration and the experiences that I've had, my body has changed shape a lot. Um, and being active in the, the gay community, I was more active in my youth than I am now. I've gotten a little older and I'm not one for carrying signs and marching in parades as much or going to clubs till 3 a.m. Uh, it's really not my, not my shtick now. But once upon a time, it really was. And appearances were important. Um, I'm not saying that gay culture is a shallow culture. I'm saying I was very shallow when I was involved in that part of the culture. You know, I'm taking ownership of my contribution uh, to it. And I was judging people on their looks because I was judging me on my looks and I assumed they were doing the same. So I would, I would suspect that other people might have been doing the same, which led them to being a little bit critical too. But starting when I came out, I came out when I was 18 and I was already like a month into college. And I was thin at the time. My obesity ran through my childhood and I dropped enough weight um, by the time I finished high school that I was in a standard like average range for my height. Um, I would say maybe a little bit thinner than average, but right about there. And so I enter the dating world because I really wasn't, I dated in high school, but it was like kind of more for show just to get people to stop picking on me and so they'd leave me alone. And then once I got to college, I was like, well, screw this. So uh, as I was finding myself dating and being social, I realized that how I looked mattered. Um, and having been a person who was overweight my whole life, it's extremely flattering to be complimented on your looks, especially when it's been something you've been trying to cover up for most of your life. Um, and something people always made it a point not to mention to you. Um, throughout my youth, it was, God, you're so smart. You're so funny. You have such a nice sense of humor. I like you like a brother. You know, like all that kind of stuff you hear forever. And then to have someone give you the most shallow compliment, like, God, you have such a small waist. That does more for me than a hug from baby Jesus. And it shouldn't, you know. But I was 18 years old. I was young. And it did. That got me into my first relationship. Um, and got me through most of college. I actually stayed about the same size through most of college. And it started to make me think for how social that I was. And uh, let's just say I, I fancied myself to be pretty popular. I, I made up for lost time. If you, you smell what I'm stepping in here. Okay. Um, so... Beyond that, I got into a couple relationships. And the last one I was in at the end of college, I'd actually put on 
what is now my goal weight, I had to gain 40 pounds then to get to. And I felt huge. Someone introduced me to the idea of straight weight versus gay weight. Like I was at a good straight weight, but my gay weight, <laughs> I was a little too heavy. So I had that relationship end and I was at a higher weight and I thought I'm back on the market now. I gotta, I gotta get down to fighting weight. Crashed into such a bout of malnutrition and starvation because I thought I've, I've got to, I've got to be thin. I've got to look good. I'm back on the market. I'll be alone. No one wants a fat guy. Um, and so I, I did what I thought I had to do and it seemed to work. I got into a relationship really quickly after that. Um, and then I gained weight during that relationship. Now there was other factors involved there. I also developed into a full blown alcoholic during that relationship. Um, I also got into more of a habit of binging and purging during that relationship. The person I was in a relationship with struggled with some issues of their own and I started to mirror them and then feel less inhibited about acting out on my own. And there was no accountability holding back and forth. We weren't trying to help each other get well. We were both ignoring each other being sick. We were two people who were kind of fucked up doing the best we could. And for all the obvious reasons, it didn't work out. Um, and then for the next five or six years, I just tried to get my life together. And I was single beyond that because if you believe it or not, there's not a really big market for 300 pound bulimic chain smoking alcoholics. Who knew, right? So once I started to finally get myself together and um, was able to put down some of the habits that were killing me, that I was using to kill myself really slowly in this weird kind of perverse uh, masochistic sort of way, and I was able to knock that off with a lot of help. I'm, I'm no hero. I had, you know, all the family and friends and support staff in the world. Um, helping keep me alive until I was able to get a hold of it. And over that time, my weight blew up and blew up and blew up. Um, the partner I have now, I feel good about because I met him at my heaviest, <laughs> at my heaviest weight. But even then, even then, I still suspected because we were friends first and I got the kind of, I don't know, I like you, but sort of thing. And I, of course, assumed it was because I was too fat. Um, later I found out that there was other reasons, but my first assumption was that. And, you know, it's nice. Like I said earlier, when you're, when you're heavy your whole life and someone compliments you about your physical appearance, it's, it's so overwhelmingly, it, it, it uh, the first few times it just takes your breath away because you can't believe that someone's saying that kind of thing about you. It matters so much more than it should, um, especially if you have incredibly low self-esteem, which I've kind of, you know, dealt with through different periods of my life. Sometimes it's higher than others. And so trying to reconcile all that can be very, very challenging. Um, and it brings me to this point in my journey where now I'm not trying to impress anybody. I'm not trying to punish myself. I'm not trying to um, be the cutest one in the club. I'm not trying to fit into smaller pants. I'm not trying to, you know, impress anybody. I'm just trying to keep, make my life a little longer. Um, that's, that's totally different. It's totally different. And maybe it's a factor of age, but I kind of care less and less what the boys think about how I look, um, which always has that opposite effect of people being more attracted to you the less you care so that's that's a little bit interesting but I mean this is so this is the deal this is what I'm doing right now and um it, it's it's been so interesting over the course of my life to see how my interactions with people romantic and social interactions um have been influenced so heavily I've been influenced so heavily by my weight that it's influenced those relationships. It's played more of a factor in those situations than I believed it would, than I thought it would. And those experiences colored, each one colored the next relationship, um, colored the next experience, and one went after another, after another. And then the next thing I knew, 
I had an eating disorder because every move I was making was to um, alter my appearance, to alter my feelings, to numb out bad ones. And the bonus was that I got thinner. So not only do I get to torture myself, I get a prize. It was really, really seductive. And then when you throw in the towel and you decide, I'm hungry, I've been hungry for two years, and all the weight comes back, you know, you kind of say, fuck it, whatever. I'm going to be alone. It's not going to matter. I'll just eat what I want, and I'll just hold up in my room. Then you have to reemerge and be in the world again, and the cycle starts all over. If you're me, it starts all over. And I imagine it's that way for some other people, too. So, well, where does that leave me now? Now I'm in a loving relationship. Now I'm in the process of losing weight again. Now I'm, you know, 15 years older than I was then. And heading towards midlife. And what do I want to have to show for it? Uh, do I want to spend every last bit of breath in me trying to, <laughs> trying to get back to my birth weight? No, I don't think it's that important. But um, I want to be able to walk a little easier and breathe a little easier and stay around a little longer, you know, see the nieces and nephews grow up and be the weird gay uncle. So um, there's other reasons to, to try to get well and to take care of myself that aren't so shallow as they used to be. So um, again, thanks for indulging me. It's been, like I said, a rough day and... Um, I think I'm going to finish this and maybe go take a nap. But uh, thanks for indulging me, and I'll check in with y'all another day this week. Bye.